And now, please join me in welcoming our last speaker, Mr. Andrew Wong, Senior Manager Services ASEAN, Red Hat Asia Pacific, as he shares on how Red Hat experts can help architect, implement, and enable organizations for tomorrow's IT. Mr. Wong, please. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Those at the back? Good, this is the last session, right? Before you um, end the day. And also, this is the last session before the uh, lucky draw at the end, right? So for those of you who have not uh, submitted your entries for lucky draw, there's a box at the back. Please do that now. Yes, we have a very exciting prize to be won. Yeah. Very good. So all you have to do now is to stay on to the end of this presentation. I will not take long. <laughs> yeah. Hi, um, I'm from the uh, services team. Right. My name is Andrew. Um, I run the services organization in ASEAN, right? meaning the, uh, the pre-sales team, the uh, consulting team, as well as the uh, training team. Right. Um, today I'll be talking about the um, solution lifecycle, right? Right from the beginning when we walk in um, to a customer organization to do an architecting, pre sales, solution, and kind of work to implementation, deployment, right? And also the last part where we, you know, walk in and enable your team, right? To be able to support the solution that we build for you, right? So earlier on, this gentleman asked a question about, you know, solution getting more and more complex, right? more and more um, demanding. Yeah, that's where we are here to help you, right? The services organization is here to help you um, build the right solution that's going to improve the efficiency and the productivity of your team. Okay? So the architect that we have right, today, right, has a huge, um, you know, and a deep domain uh, knowledge on the, not just the technology, but also the technology around it, right? And also the broad uh, expertise, not just in country, but also around the world, across the globe, that we can tap on to help you architect the right solution. Now, we have done a lot of our, our cases, and if you were in the main hall earlier on, you know, uh, Damien uh, mentioned about Casio, mentioned about NTU, right? That's where you know, our global expert has come in to help craft the solution you know, that works for our customers. Now, in addition to that, you know, we also have a team of um, consultants, all right? A team of uh, highly expert skill um, people that has done, you know, um, a lot of work um, implementing, all right? Deploying, migrating, all right? And also um, helping to do, you know, work like tuning work for customers, all right? And the last bit is uh, we have um, a professional team, all right, globally, that build training curriculum right, for our customers, our partners, and also solution right, around enabling our university students right, in, the, in the schools. So this curriculum will build right, not just from you know, curriculum writers. These are people who actually work on projects. These are people who are delivering the course, coming together and and craft the solution, and craft that uh, course material. And this course material has a six to nine months and no revision cycle, which is good, as in when there's new enhancement to the course is updated in that very um, prompt fashion. So let's talk about the, the first part, <coughs> architecting work, right? So I believe most of you here, right, will have um, some of, or all of this, you know, uh, complex, uh, problems right, you have back in the office, you know, like, um, for example, un unresponsiveness, silo you know, systems, right, 
difficult and costly management, vendor lock-in, uh, bloated infrastructures, as well as you know, capacity that's exceeded, right? How do you, right, with all this complexity, is able to transform your business now, right, and get ready for the future? How do you stay competitive, right, in the ever-changing world today, right? If we are not able to accelerate, you know, in terms of getting onto the right technology path to stay competitive, right, we will lose out in, the, in this uh, run. So, we are here to help you continue to stay agile, be flexible, and be able to adapt to the new technology, right? Be able to be, you know, agile to changes. Be able to have your developers, in-house developer, being efficient, being productive, and being able to focus their time on innovation, right? Rather than, you know, uh, the, the lights on kind of uh, work that they are doing. And the question that a lot of IT, you know, uh, organization ask themselves is, how can they do more with less? Most organization today has a smaller budget this year compared to last year, but they are expected to do more. So how do they do more with less? So one of the key things that we help our customers to do is to optimize the existing infrastructure they have, right? For example, to move away from legacy, from older, you know, uh, uh, Unix environment to say higher performance, you know, Linux environment. For example, free up the time of the developers, right, using some of the solution that were highlighted in the day session to make them more efficient, focus on the work they are doing best. And also free up the money that was spent, right, on expensive infrastructure, right, and spend those money on more strategic investment in the solution, in the people, in the technology. And finally, to help you stay agile and flexible moving forward, all right, and be able to move between different technologies. The next um, phase after we talk about architecting will be on implementation. Right? You need to have experts that have done it before to sit beside your team, work with you. Right? I think every IT vendor will talk to you and explain to you that it helps reduce costs. Right? It helps to have your project being completed and stay within the timeline and the budget. And I think that is true for all the projects and I believe a lot of you have gone through a number of projects. It's important that we complete the project within the time, within the resource and within the money that we have allocated for that projects. I'm going to share with you a little bit here about a case study, right? A YTL, telecommunication company in, in Malaysia, right? Engaged us to build right, a virtual learning environment for 10,000 screws across Malaysia. So they were the first to embrace the uh, Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization Solution. They were given you know, a, a, a funding from the government to build that in a 12 months period. We are able to do that in six months, right? Not because um, we flew in the best expert to do it, all right? But I think the key was that we have the right architect who is able to craft a solution, was able to design something that works, right? And the architect don't design that all by themselves, sitting in the classroom, sitting in the room, and start drawing a design, right? He worked very closely with the consultants, right? To make sure that whatever was size, right, is reasonable, it's not aggressive, right? It's not prudent, it's just reasonable. And whatever was designed actually works, right? Based on the, the hardware, the other you know, databases, and, and so on. So this is key. But we, we have uh, heard about projects that were architected by a pre-sales team, right? But it goes to the consulting team. You know, they, they find that this solution doesn't work. They have to do work around. And as a result, right, the solution is not efficient. So that is what I was very proud to say that you know, you have a team of consultants and you know, architects working together. You are able to craft a solution and bring it to and execute it 
to, to go live, all right? In a manner that's able to reduce your risk, reduce your cost, and able to go live on time, all right? The other thing I was um, want to mention here is that um, the consultants within Red Hat have direct access to the R&D, the engineering team in the US. All right. If we en encounter a particular defect right, in the product, we are able to escalate that right to the engineering team, create a fix, right, bring it upstream, back to the community, and have the next release incorporating that fix in a much quicker fashion. Right? Because as you are aware, right, we have a huge uh, team of people that's contributing to the kernel, to the community. I think that's the biggest advantage here. Right, um, I have a few points here to, to highlight on implementation. Right? We know today we have a lot of data coming in from different sources, right? Your social media, your marketing events, your website, right? Um, even your production line, right? So all this data will help, right, in your decision making process. And if all this data are somehow not integrated, right, you are not able to make that intelligent decision on your procurement, on your purchase, on your investment, right, you will be able to you know, lose out to your competition. <coughs> right. So as, as more and more data come into place today, we probably have you know, 10 times more data that we have to analyze to make a decision compared to maybe three years ago. So how do we intelligently integrate this data and make the right choice on our investment. So that's something we think about. And uh, you may want to think about also how do you automate that process, right? On certain condition happening, you know, what are the proposed solution or proposed next step forward? Okay. And also we have many customers and we have helped many customers move from older legacy systems or you know, middleware into the newer, highly more efficient um, uh, systems to unlock the true value for the business. And we have done that a lot with our customers and we can continue to do that for you know, uh, going forward. We will have that need to migrate to newer you know, systems to stay efficient, to stay ahead of the curve. And also um, to harness the power of the cloud. In the previous main session, you heard Brian Che talk about you know, cloud, talk about innovation, right? We have many customers that are using on-premise and you know, no cloud solution. All right? They're also exploring how do we take advantage of the public cloud. And the best approach may be that we stay on a hybrid version of that, hybrid cloud. Red Hat has done multiple projects on that, and we are probably the best partner Okay, can help you, you know, harness the power of the cloud. As we have more and more systems in place today, right? The, the challenges that a lot of IT organizations have today will be system inoperability, right? CPU, you know, um, underutilization, or hardware, um, you know, inefficiency, right? We need to drive better efficiency through standardization to having a repeatable set of services and also being able to tune your services to perform better right? and have a better price and performance you know, behavior. And lastly, as more and more organizations go into the open source solution, Red Hat will be in the best position to help you, you know, build that governance, right? build that path towards moving an open source, or open solution. We have done it before, we've done it for our customers. We have a lot of knowledge to help you embrace um, open source solution. Let's talk about enablement. Right. The last piece is also an important piece because we don't just come in, you know, craft a solution, build it for you and walk away, right? So who is going to maintain it? Somebody has to maintain it, right? Is that a hire somebody who has a skill set to do it? Or you train somebody, all right, who doesn't have a skill set to somebody who is able to 
maintain the system, right? To deploy, manage, or even solve routine challenges, um, you know, uh, challenges along the, the way in supporting the system. Now, we have surveys that mentions people who are been trained, certified, you know, have a lower turnover rate. Right? It's true because you know how to support the system. Most people today go on to Google to find solutions, but you don't have to do that. We have speak to our customers. All right. How much time uh, untrained personnel take to solve a problem or troubleshoot an issue? Right, versus somebody who has been trained and, and were able to pinpoint where the root of question problem is. Could be done in a couple of hours versus somebody who is going to the web and find a solution. Could be a week. Right? So there's a lot of time that's saved through that. Now we have um, a, a whole series of causes, right, from core Linux administration causes, right, from uh, maintaining a, a, a Linux server, you know, a web server on Linux, as well as advanced causes like you know, uh, storage, right, like clustering, like tuning and troubleshooting, to you know, the cloud, cloud forms, open stack kind of causes, and to the extreme, you know, right, and you have the um, JBoss set of causes, as well as JBoss developer set of causes. Right. We have customers that have um, come forward and say that the causes, right, and the certification that they attended is not the same as any traditional causes. Not just because you have 50% of the course being delivered through a, an online version where you need to do activities and hands-on kind of work, but rather the course bring you to a, a different level where the certification or the exams or the tests at the end of the course is not something that you can guess, right? It's no longer a multiple choice question. It's not, it's not even a simulated environment where you move through different pages of the browser. But it's a real life test of your competency certification. What does it mean? A real environment will be set up, right? And the student or the participant is going through different test questions. For example, you're given a task, and you need to complete that in 30 minutes. But there are multiple ways to do the same task. But if you are able to do that in 30 minutes, you pass the session, right? Unlike a multiple choice questions, you can still guess A, B, C, D, right? And you could likely still get it right. There's a 25% chance of getting it right even you don't know the answer. Right? I'll take an analogy of um, a driving test. Most of us here today have, I would guess, right, a driving license. To be able to drive on a road today, you need to pass a theory test. Right? And that test is multiple choice. Right? You can still guess A, B, C, D, sometimes A, B, C, D, E, right? and still pass the test. But passing the test doesn't mean that you're able to drive on the road, right? The driving test will have the practical test where you're expected to be driving on the road, reversing, going up the slope, parking, you know, and moving, doing a turn with an instructor sitting next to you. That is the real life driving experience, just like the um, certification exam we have. So somebody passed the driving test, we know that somebody is able to drive a car on the road. Just like somebody who has passed a rare certification is able to help administer all right, um, your Linux environment. Next, because uh, this is a JBoss track, all right, I'm just going to highlight briefly the four pillars of JBoss courses that's available to you. you know. The very first one is um, the acceleration pillar where you will have the ability to learn the JBoss administration, all right, and the JBoss administration advanced courses, plus the JBoss EAP development courses. On the integration piece, you will be able to learn the JBoss fields, right, and the fields, uh, field service works set of courses, more on integration. Automation, we learn the uh, BRMS, business process management suite of courses, and the lastly, uh, we have the data virtualization causes, right? So pretty comprehensive um, from the entire portfolio that we have to offer. 
The last case study right, is on this uh, transportation industry. Right? We have um, CIS that has been working very closely with the consulting team right, during the planning, the execution, as well as the implementation process. The key thing I want to highlight here is the, the team, the Red Hat team was involved um, all the way from the planning stage, the requirement gathering stage, right, to the designing, the architecting, and also having a consultant coming on board in that process of planning. So whatever was planned, we know is a solution that will work. And we follow through the execution stage where the architect was also involved in it. Right? So there's a lot of value in having um, that three stages of the cycle, uh, enablement, implementation, and architect. So just to summarize um, the discussion, right, what we talked about, we have solutioning expert, right, architects, that is going to help you envision right, your company um, roadmap. It could be a one year or three years roadmap. Help you scope that business model. Help you define right, the outcomes and help you analyze the system and propose a solution that, that will work for you. And we have experts who have implemented similar solutions to help you build a plan and execute on the implementation. Right, if there's a need to build a POC, right, to actually prove that you know, this is a, 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 a solution that works, we have done small pilots on that as well. And lastly, I know, talk to our um, training expert, right, a training consultant, who is able to help you design a training plan to help skill up your existing IT team from where they are today right, to where you want them to be so that they are able to embrace the new technology. Finally, this is a, a slide to help you jumpstart on training. Right? Because of the uh, forum today, we have the offer of 20% discount on all JBoss courses. Right? To find out more about this, um, approach our, our staff <coughs> at the JBoss uh, and the Red Hat booth on the main hall. Right? Thank you very much. Is there any questions? <coughs> the, the box, anybody have not? Um, put in your um, yeah your names onto the, the, the lucky draw box. Do you know what we are winning right today? Yeah. We're giving a iPad I think. All right, Kenny. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the track. And now we will reveal the top three scorers for the OpenStack Online Assessment Contest. Those of you who have done the uh, OpenStack uh, Assessment in the main hall, and where we have the lunch, these are the three highest scorers. Right? Um, if you are one of those uh, winners, or high scorer, top scorer, please proceed to the a red hat booth after this to collect your price. Right. So we're going to do that iPad. Congratulations again to the winners. And now we'll be conducting the lucky draw and we'd like to invite Andrew Wong, senior manager uh, services are here, to pick our lucky winner. So That's a lot of them. Right. Yeah, the other hall has a. Uh, <laughs> there's two iPads. There's two iPads, yeah. So, you guys are lucky, right? There's more, less people here. And the winner is. And the winner is. Samuel Wang from Robert Bosch. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Ah, oh, nice. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Take a picture. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you.